actually here at the hospital at the foundation office, and this isn't typically something that I would be doing, but the reason why this lecture series came about is that we had a donation from the Bowman family, a memory of Bob Bowman, who was somebody who was diabetic, and this was something that he had hoped that um, the hospital would do more community outreach on. So that's that's kind of why we're here, and, and as a result of that, there's been a, I want to say it's like a diabetic, it's, it's become a focus of the hospital, so you'll probably see more things um, down the road. But, um, so today, this is kind of a fun thing to get to sample food and eat and, and um, hopefully you'll come back to the other two workshops that are planned and hopefully the weather cooperates <laughs> and stay with us and so we'll keep you posted on that um, but with us today we have Anthony Vachetti who's our guest chef who's he's the executive chef for Health Quest and prior to taking on that role which is fairly new role yeah it's a fairly new role um, he was the executive chef for vassar brothers medical center for 25 years and he is a, a graduate of the culinary institute and um, and many of you um, know rufia um, rufia payment is the supervisor of the outpatient nutritional counseling at northern duchess hospital she runs a lot of programs here. One is the New Leaf program, Get Real Weight Results program, um, runs a bariatric support group, and she is, and this is my kid, we go to, my kids go to school in Red Hook, so she's been really involved in um, working with the Red Hook school system and getting um, healthier lunches there, and we are really, we have a wonderful <laughs> lunch program with Red Hook because of that. Um, and there's many other things, and she writes a lot of articles for different journals, um, but they'll guide you through your mm -hmm. seminar here. So thanks for coming, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I just want to ask, everybody in this room diabetic or have a family member who's diabetic? Um, we are very lucky because really, Having diabetes is not as complicated as it may sound it is. It's really about learning to love the food that loves you back and takes care of you. And just knowing what to eat, you can manage your blood sugar. And the most important thing is to cook fresh or easy things, things, and the menu we decided uh, with Tony doesn't cost much so it's uh, budget friendly and very easy so those of you who say you don't have time or you're tired of cooking you've been cooking for 40 years you can't be bothered there are simple things that you can make and put it in the freezer portion it and then the days that you don't feel like cooking you can take it out warm it up and enjoy it nothing it's better than home as you all know homemade cooking so we decided on a very healthy menu which i think it is uh, we are going to have salad that tony is going to talk about it and you know the most important thing with diabetes is consistency with meals is key consistency what do i mean by consistency meaning eating your three meals eating a small frequent meals having snacks healthy snack between meals the magic is to keep your blood sugar constant and preventing fluctuation in blood sugar when you have fluctuation in blood sugar, you are going to feel tired, uh, you are going to feel hungry, you are going to feel a little bit blue, which we call it sugar blue, and also you are going to feel at times shaky, which I'm sure some of you who have diabetes have experienced it. So it's really important that you be consistent with your meals and your snacks and half of your plate should be salad or healthy green as I call it rainbow vegetable which Tony is going to talk about salad okay um, 
that's why in front of you today you have a uh, it's a mescaline mix salad spring mix uh, it's a readily available uh, in the grocery stores with a little bit of a tomato and a nice uh, balsamic uh, dressing on the side for that it's very simple it's easy to prepare actually nowadays um, it's already washed, ready to go in the bag, open the bag. You don't have to toy with, you know, cleaning all the little leaves and putting it all together. So it's, it's quick, it's easy, and uh, it's probably one of the better salads for you. It's better than an iceberg salad, uh, which really has no nutritional benefits for you. That's why uh, years ago, uh, one of the hotels I worked in, one of the chefs, you say, no, no cheap salad. We, we, we're not serving the cheap salad. We can't. It has to be real greens. So, uh, and the green has vitamins, you know, the vitamin A, fiber. Why is it that we say fiber also helps lower blood sugar? Fiber also fills you up. Fiber also helps lower your cholesterol. So it is important. Deep green is really important. I understand that some of you might be on blood thinner, like Coumadin, right? So with Coumadin, it's not like 40 years ago, 30 years ago, that you can have green. You can have green as long as, again, you are consistent. Like you, as long as you have one cup of leafy green every single day. As long as, like, if you have green on Monday, the next time you eat green on Friday, that's going to affect your blood level. So consistency, again, even with those of you who are on blood thinner, it's key. And tomatoes. Tomatoes are full of antioxidant. They're delicious, especially grape tomato. I always say if you buy local, is better, of course, but... Um, Nowadays, we can get, right, Tony, tomato anywhere. 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 They're a hothouse, fine, ripened. When you, when you say uh, humidin, blood thinner, and green, how about aspirin as a blood thinner or green? Is, there any, is it humidin specific that you're referring to? Right, and not, right. Not, not, not aspirin, like not it. fish oil. Not, you know, because fish oil, omega-3 fish oil flax, they're also avocado, they're, they could be, you know, uh, as blood thinner too, mm -hmm. even parsley, you know. No, we're not talking about that. Okay, okay. Uh, in the past, you used to say, eat a lot of romaine. Right, romaine too, yeah. sure, of course. You didn't mention it, and I just wanted to put it Of in course. Table. You could have kale salad. Mm -hmm. You could have baby spinach salad. Um, any, any greens, right? Dark green, any dark green salad, yeah. Actually, you could make a salad I made yesterday with cabbage, mm -hmm. Granny Smith apple, and shredded carrots. It's delicious. Mixture is so refreshing and delicious. And you could use the red cabbage if you don't want to do the green if you're on Coumadin. And it is really good, delicious. And in yeah, April. And cabbage lasts much longer than lettuce. lettuce yes, it yes. does. <laughs> and in April, in the backyard, instead of using Scots, get some dandelions and add them to your salad. Yeah. <laughs> when they're nice and tender and young. Yes. It's, it works. <laughs> All right. Vegetarian chili should be Yeah, start. we'll start with, okay. What I've done here uh, for these items today, I picked some of fall vegetables to work with, okay? And what we're gonna do, I'll show you how to prepare a spaghetti squash, uh, and take that spaghetti squash and serve it a couple of different ways, okay? Um, if you're strictly vegetarian, want more vegetables, use a vegetable chili with the spaghetti squash. If you still like, you know, you want to, you like a meat sauce, well, I'll show you how to uh, put together the spaghetti squash with a uh, turkey bolognese. And the turkey being a lot leaner than ground beef. And you could still have the same feeling of a nice meat sauce, and we'll go from there. 
right okay. and why are we using turkey right because when you have diabetes you're already at risk for heart disease, right? So you want to avoid saturated fat, which is animal fat. So if you're using animal protein, has to be very lean. Chicken, turkey, without the skin, cut out all the you know fat, make it really lean. And of course, seafood, you know, any kind of seafood and fish, you know, that's good too. And I always tell um, my clients that lean beef, if you love beef or lamb, lean beef once a week, but it has to be very lean. But, you know, turkey and chicken is the best, of course. The lean is very good. And um, Tony also, go ahead. Okay, and what we'll start with is, if you're all familiar, the spaghetti squash. Okay, nice full vegetable, readily available all of, at all the farmers markets and all around the area. Uh, it's actually pretty simple to prepare, but it's a little tough sometimes. So uh, you cut off both ends, okay, and it, it does help to have a, a larger knife. Don't try it with a small knife. Take that, take the ends off. Split it down the middle. Can I just get this? And what you do is just take the the center out, the seeds. Okay, come right out just like a pumpkin or any other squash. And then there's a couple of ways to prepare this. You can take it just like that. Put it upside down on a pan, a little bit of water, and then you can bake it in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. If you're in a hurry, put it on a dish. Put a little bit of water on the dish, put it in your microwave. It's just this fast about six, seven minutes. Once you feel that it's a little soft, okay, you take it out, let it cool, turn it over, and then this way you don't burn yourself, okay? So when you take it out, you take your fork and shred it right out. And with the magic of television here, <laughs> this is what you wind up with. Why are we why are we using this? I'm sure a lot of you know that over pasta. Because when you have diabetes, you really want to limit your carbohydrate. Of course you want to stay away from refined carbohydrate, processed food. What is refined carbohydrate? White rice, white bread, white potato, anything that is processed has corn syrup. Read the ingredient. Reading ingredient and label is important, it's crucial. No corn syrup, no high fructose. And the reason, even the brown rice pasta, even the whole grain pasta, you know per cup cook has about 45 grams of carbohydrate. Even though it's complex, it still is going to affect your blood sugar. So why not use a wonderful spaghetti squash which is full of fiber and it's your vegetable and it's not going to affect your blood sugar the way the brown rice or um, whole grain or pasta or brown rice pasta would do. Uh, when I do squashes, like spaghetti squash, I put acorn, it doesn't matter, any of them, I nuke them. I put them face down with some water, but I put saran wrap over, which keeps all the moisture in it and steams the top. Gets done faster and better, and it doesn't get burnt or dried out. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. That's good too. Very good. So while your spaghetti squash is cooking, either in the oven, microwave, any way you choose, now you take some of your veg, and there is a recipe in front of you for vegetable chili. But what it comes down to, it's what you enjoy to eat. Okay, if you like zucchini, if you like red pepper, or some people, they don't like red, they want green. Whatever you want to put in, 
you know, that's, that's up to you. This recipe here has a little bit of jicama. What jicama will give you is a little bit of crunch, a little bite, okay? Give you something to chew on, makes it, you know. Root vegetable. Yeah. Yep. Carrots, whatever you like to put in there. So you just dice up your veg, you mix them together, okay? A little red onion, a little white onion, diced tomato, and you can have that, you can prepare it the night before. You can have that in your refrigerator, all ready to go. Okay, and when you're ready, you have your veg, your spaghetti squash is cooking. This can be prepared ahead of time also. So, you take it out of the refrigerator cold, a little oil, olive oil in the pan, touch of garlic in there. Garlic, natural uh, penicillin, um, lower, help lower your blood cholesterol, your blood pressure, will boost up your immune system, garlic. And I tell you an old remedy, if you, God forbid, you catch a cold, you cough a lot. If you, I know it smells pretty strong, but if you cut an onion in half or garlic, you put it in a cheesecloth, you put it in your room that you're sleeping, you notice you cough much less. This is an old remedy, which uh, you can go or go on your computer and check on it but garlic and onion are also garlic is anti-inflammatory those of you who suffer from arthritis reduces inflammation and gives a great flavor to your food smells good right yeah so a little garlic little olive oil little salt little pepper and then as far as fresh herb, a little basil, whatever you prefer. Basil, it's antidepressant. Uh, basil will boost up your mood. So the more you eat, the happier you will get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also keeping your blood sugar level helps your mood. When you have fluctuation in blood sugar, makes you irritable, tired, and depressed. And cumin, if you have problem with indigestion, cumin helps with indigestion. And those of you who say, you know, um, too much green or too much vegetable, too much fiber bothers my stomach, that's, that's why we use cumin. That helps with gas and also helps with digestion. So and it's good for arthritis. Go ahead. Sorry. So you have all your veg that were cut up. Get them in the pan. Same thing. Okay. Saute it up. And then you wind up with your vegetable chili. Okay. Fresh and fancy. Okay. Serve that right on top. And it's a vegetarian entree at this point. Now we take the same. And you can see how fast when you start with the raw vegetable, it cooks right up for you. So this is like a as Rachel Ray would say, 30 minutes or less, okay? You're not gonna be in the kitchen all day to produce a nutritious meal. You'll be in and you'll be out. And you know, if you're making a vegetarian dish, you can save it in the refrigerator for a week. Mm -hmm. There is no animal product in it. It doesn't go bad, so 
if you get tired of eating it every other night, you could eat it every other night, you could eat it Monday night, then you have it again Wednesday night. You could add variation to it, you know, you could be, become uh, one night serve it with the spaghetti squash, one night serve it with brown rice. Remember what I said, if you have diabetes, portion with carbohydrate is important. Only a cup cooked grain, never more than a cup of cooked grain. Healthy, even healthy grain. Could be quinoa, could be uh, barley, oats, but it's still only a cup cooked. Portion, portion, portion. Do you need a hand with that? Do you consider yeah. polenta a grain or not? Polenta is yeah, grain. Of course it's a grain. Well, I know, but from a diabetic standpoint. Well, I'd rather if one has diabetes, instead of polenta, uses brown rice or black rice or uh, quinoa or whole grain uh, pasta, uh, you can have polenta as long as half of your plate is vegetable. Right. And corn is the worst thing for your blood sugar. That is why. <laughs> I never say, you know, I never say there's no forbidden food. Moderation is key. Yeah. And moderation doesn't mean, uh, you know, once, uh, once a day. Moderation means once a week. You know, if you are eating corn, as long as you eat only a cup, it's local corn, it's fresh, it's not genetically modified then by all means. But remember, corn is a starch, not a vegetable. So the same thing with butternut squash, acorn squash, and peas. They are starches. So you cannot have corn and a potato, or corn and bread. That's a no-no. But the spaghetti squash is different. Different. Now we're going to do the uh, turkey bolognese. Turkey bolognese. And you know, the way we eat, it's a habit. To break any habit, it's difficult. So you have to be brave and embrace new flavors. And remember, it's about your health. You want to feel good. You want to have energy. Once you start looking at food as your medicine, you will eat things that you have never tried before in the past. You want food to be your medicine, not medicine, your food. And then, you know, you will enjoy different new vegetables. And if you're one of those people, like for example, never had kale, say to yourself, you know, I'm going to try kale. Buy just a little bit and try it. All you need to do with kale you saute it with drop of olive oil and garlic. And that's it. You know, delicious. Now for the uh, turkey bolognese, what you can do the easiest way is you take your favorite meat sauce recipe and it's just a substitution. So I'm put, instead of putting ground beef and ground pork in your meat sauce, just substitute your um, ground turkey. And now uh, at the store, there's two different types. You have to watch Good. when you go to get the ground turkey. Because one will say all white, 
and the other one just says ground turkey, and there is a difference. Of course. Yeah. Did you say it's better? I'm sorry, I missed that. The all white. Oh, get the all white. Get the all white the because old yeah, because the other, like I said, is a lot of dark meat. Okay. Or a lot of extra skin or fat. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Now you, you take the same spaghetti squash. You have your meat sauce all ready. You put that on there. It's like Sunday pasta. You take a, for a nice flavor with it, a little Asiago cheese, sprinkle that on top, and you think you're really having a dish of pasta. And we eat with our eyes. Yeah, you're gonna have to put the right? cheese on. Right? We eat with our eyes. And our nose, right? I have one question about the beans. How about beans? Beans are excellent source of protein. They are high in fiber. In vegetarian chili, beans takes the place of meat. Um, truly, if you have everybody, not just, this is not just for uh, diabetics, but I always recommend to my diabetic patients if they can, they should eat twice a week completely vegetarian. Twice a week. Why? And vegetarian doesn't mean eat a lot of pasta and rice and potato. Vegetarian means a lot of beans, vegetable, non-starchy vegetable. And beans are inexpensive. Those of you who have the patience to cook, soak it overnight. It cooks faster the next day. And once you rinse it two or three times, it's not as gassy, the beans. And using cumin helps, you know, with digestion and is very high in soluble fiber. So enjoy the beans. But then what about green beans? They're a starch. They're non-starchy no. vegetables. You're welcome to eat green beans Wait, as much as you oh, want. Okay. Green beans, broccoli, Brussels sprout, asparagus, eggplant, zucchini, <laughs> all of those. Swiss chard, kale. It's just you have to really honestly I always say put value on your health. I always say we take better care of our animals than we do ourselves. You know, you have to convince yourself you are what you eat. And really take the time to cook for yourself and make, you know, make yourself Try new vegetable, new you know dishes, new spices, new herbs, and those of you who have anyway in United States, we eat a lot of salt. Everything we eat has natural salt in it. So if you have diabetes, you want to protect your heart and your kidney. Stay away from canned soups. They're very high in sodium. You know, I always say, like, you know why you made for vegetarian chili? If you really feel like eating soup, just add some low salt broth to it and make it a soup, correct? It's a soup. <laughs> it's That's a it. soup. I've done it before. I know it works. Even water. Right, even water. It works. How much soap? Pardon? How much Two, one should not eat more than 2,000 milligram of sodium per day. So my recommendation is if you use very little salt in cooking, then do not add salt on the table. Stay away from salted nuts. Nuts makes a wonderful snack. For diabetics, nuts are wonderful for a snack, but portion is important because they're high in calorie. So you want unsalted nuts. If you buy sauces, buy no added salt like tomato sauce or stewed tomato or diced tomato. 
If you buy beans, rinse it three or four times. That way you get rid of 50% of the sodium. And of course, you know I'm going to say it's the way bacon, sausage, cold cuts. If you buy cold cuts, buy the low salt. Uh, not that I'm advertising for boar's head, but their low salt product is gluten free for those, some of you might be gluten sensitive, and it doesn't taste that bad. It's good. I shouldn't say that bad. It tastes good. <laughs> you just put tomato on it, you know, slice if you're making sandwiches, tomato and lettuce. Great. Tastes good. I want you to be honest with me. How was the salad dressing? Very, very, very good. Very little oil. For the whole thing, I used maybe three tablespoons of olive oil. It's balsamic vinegar and water, and there's some dried oregano, and black pepper. Because you have to remember, keeping your weight down for controlling your blood sugar is also important. Olive oil is good, but remind yourself that per tablespoon has 120 calorie. And if you eat 100 calorie extra a day, it's 12 pounds a year. So it's good, but you want to use it sparingly. More is not better. More vegetable always is better. The more green you eat, the better it is. The more veg, half of your plate should be vegetable. And dairy, if you use dairy, please make sure you use low-fat cottage cheese, part skim ricotta cheese, low skim milk or 1% milk. And if you use hard cheese, use uh, low-fat hard cheese. Now, like Cabot, I know Cabot buys milk from our local farms around Hudson Valley, buys milk from our local farms that are good, they're good to their cows. Um, so they now have cheeses that are 50% less fat or 75% less fat in the market, which tastes pretty good. And Alpine Lace also has low fat Swiss, which is pretty good. Lucia, yes. I, I used the uh, fat free milk uh -huh. and I was absolutely surprised reading the label that it said 12 grams of sugar. Right. What kind of sugar is Lactose, in natural mm -hmm. sugar. Ah. A glass of milk, whether it's full fat or skim or 2% or 1%, has 12 grams of natural sugar, which is lactose. So that's why if you have diabetes and if your blood sugar drops, rather than juice, you know how I feel, those of you who know me about juice, no fruit juices whatsoever. So if your blood sugar drops, the best thing to bring it up is a glass of a skim milk. So you have to remember it's 12 grams of carbohydrate. And ideally, if you want to have beautiful blood sugar, you do not want to go over 45 grams of complex carb per meal. Oh, meal. That's okay. I would say good day. No, I'm not that mean. You're not doing <laughs> actions. <laughs> I was going to say it. She's it. strict, but. <laughs> and how about simple card? Well, Zero simple card. maybe for your birthday or 4th of <laughs> July or Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> or Thanksgiving in moderation. Today was a holiday. <laughs> yeah, it's a holiday today. How about, how about a glass of wine? I recommend two four ounce glasses of wine per week, but I'm very oh, really? rigid. So two four ounce, because it, it's sugar. It turns in sugar and it affects your blood. Two four ounce glasses of wine per week. It's not about the calorie, it's 80 calorie for four ounce. But, but it's how it affects your blood That's sugar. Right. Okay. Right. I, I think you mentioned it before a little bit, but uh, what's the relationship with diabetes and eating uh, like uh, cashew nuts and sunflowers? Very good, very They're good. They're all good? Very good. The best nuts is pistachio nuts 
that increases no. your HDL. The British did this study. I read this study in British Medical Journal about three months ago that pistachio increase your HDL. They're full of B vitamins, zinc, and fiber. But remember, per cup has 800 calories. So if you're eating pistachio, you need to limit your portion with the shell a third of a cup for a snack. Almonds are excellent. You can have 15 to 20 almonds depending on their size. If there are small 20 almonds, again, you want to be, you can't sit down and eat a pound of almonds. You know, they're addictive too, but they're very good for you. They do not affect your blood sugar and they stop your hunger. Natural peanut butter and almond butter make wonderful a snack with celery on, you know, with celery stick or dip carrots in it. Make wonderful a snack. Walnuts, walnuts, if you have arthritis, you should eat four or five whole walnuts every day because excellent source of omega-3 and also makes a great snack and helps lower your cholesterol. But nuts have to be unsalted. Trish, be honest. When I brought the almonds in with cinnamon, how did it taste? Delicious. Oh! <laughs> I tried. I tried. What I do, you tried it? You liked it? Yes. What I do, I get bored with the plain almonds, right? So I pour cinnamon on top of it. Cinnamon helps lower your blood sugar, right? So what I do, then I put it, I have a little toaster oven. I put it in toaster oven. It, it's delicious. It's completely different taste. And it's something different. Does Nutella fit into that category? No, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> try. sorry. No, 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 Nutella? No, no, Nutella. No, forbid it. <laughs> you can get almonds that are cocoa coated, not chocolate coated. Right. Oh. And they're good snack food. Good. But get right. in your habit for me. You gotta watch it. Right, right. <laughs> you see, nuts could be addictive, so you have to be careful. Um, we did. We didn't talk about fruit, but Tony is going to. Exp we made Tony made homemade. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, what we tried to do another fall item, and what we have an abundance of here in the Hudson Valley yeah. apples. So uh, we put together apple crisp, uh, which is very satisfying. Uh, with the right portion, you're not going to get into trouble. Right, right portion. <laughs> right portion. And apple, there's high insoluble fiber, pectin. The fiber in apple helps lower your cholesterol. And But remember, if you're a diabetic, you do not want to eat more than three servings of fruit per day. What is a serving? Fruit the size of a tennis ball, not a huge apple. An apple or an orange the size of a tennis ball. And we are using oatmeal with our apple crisp. The recipe is there. But again, portion, portion, portion. But what about oatmeal and carb? Absolutely. Right. Right. Yes. Again, portion. Like you can't have apple crisp every single day for dessert. I'm sorry. You could have in place of apple crisp, you could have baked apple, baked apple, put sprinkled cinnamon on it, and chop walnuts if you like. Of course, you all know no honey, no maple syrup. If you have diabetes, no honey, no maple syrup, no sugar. But you can use a drizzle of agave. Agave, organic agave nectar, drizzle with agave. But honestly, if you bake apple, you know, you or you put it in my, I don't, I'm not a believer of microwave, but you could bake the apple or put it in the microwave with chopped walnuts and cinnamon. It's delicious. 
Bufia. Yeah. Your apples that you had that one about a month ago for a snack. You just take an uh, apple, slice it with cinnamon. I love it. What I do, I bring it's like candy. Right. What I do for my snack, I slice an apple. I do it first thing in the morning or the night before, and I put lots of cinnamon on it. By three o'clock in the afternoon, it's like candy. Any of my clients who I offer it to my clients, it truly is like candy. And you eat that, and when you slice it, you see we also eat, you know, a lot of eating we do is psychological. For me, if I eat just an apple, it doesn't do much. But if I slice it, I feel like I have a lot more. Yeah. And I put cinnamon like on it. It looks like it's a lot and more. Cinnamon's good for you. And cinnamon is the best thing for you. One other spice I want to talk about is turmeric or curcumin. Turmeric is a yellow spice which is very, very potent anti-inflammatory spice. Also protects you against cancer. I honestly think there is, right, Tony? There's no taste, much taste to it. No, so, by itself. Right yeah. by itself. So don't be scared of using it. You could add it to your vegetable. When I saute onion, I added a teaspoon to my onion and garlic. Why? Because really, in order to get the benefit of turmeric, you need minimum a teaspoon a day. And we know that turmeric is really potent anti-inflammatory spice and protects you against cancer. Uh, you got to protect yourself from getting splashed because it does stain you. Oh, right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Right. It doesn't come out. No. It's a good yellow coloring. I have one, one suggestion. Uh, the, the thing that I do right now at home, instead of using too much oatmeal, I grind up walnuts and put it in with the crumb crust on top of the apples. Uh huh. And that's then, very so, good. So, uh, right. And then I don't add like sugar to the apples right. at all, only uh -huh. to the topping. Uh huh. That's very Perfect. good. It's right. Sweet right. Enough. Right. I make muffin uh, with apple and carrots without any sugar. And in place of oil, I use only a tablespoon of oil, and I use four tablespoons of flax seed. Flax is a potent anti-inflammatory, omega-3, and I use oatmeal and whole wheat flour. A cup of oatmeal, a cup of whole wheat flour, a cup of shredded carrots, a cup of diced apple. And I use, you can use four egg whites or two eggs, and skim milk. And of course, cinnamon, if you like. And I don't add, I am going to be honest, I do not add walnuts to my muffin or nuts because I say I want to save calorie. That way, you have delicious muffin you can have in the morning as your complex carb with protein. You never ever eat carbs without protein. You, you can eat protein without carbs, but as a diabetic, you never eat carbs without protein. You combine it together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You were saying you use flax seed, not the ground. Ground flax seed. No, ground. ground. To get the benefit of flax seed, first of all, it has to be in a dark container. You have to put it in the refrigerator. And like the recipe calls for half a cup of oil, I use only a tablespoon of oil. And I use flax, it's fiber. Flax is very high in fiber. If you have problem um, with digestion and irregular you know, bowels, flax is the best thing. You can grind it, add it to your yogurt, to your cottage cheese, to your oatmeal. Every morning. Every morning, okay. yeah. I use, uh, as you suggested, peanut butter in my oatmeal every morning. 
mix it in after it's Beautiful. Cooked. Two tablespoons of natural peanut butter is protein, and it really stops your, you know, craving. By 10 o'clock, you're not starved, you're not ravenous. Why is it so important you have a snack between meals? And I would not count pretzel as your snack, or cookies as your snack. Um, How about pizza? <laughs> no, no. Um, the reason is, your blood sugar drops, then you get really hungry, right? and then you overeat. So you also help with portion control by eating the right snack. I take pumpkin seeds and I, I get natural peanut butter and I open up the store about it one day and I put the pumpkin seeds in the peanut butter, mix it all up, get it and it's scattered on the side. And then I, I put that on our, my oatmeal. Beautiful. I mentioned it a couple other people. They've started and they say that's really good. good. Good, very good. And pumpkin is so good for you. Full of vitamin A, protects you against prostate cancer, and has protein, has zinc, high in vitamins, especially now that the weather gets colder, please make sure you eat well. Sugar, depressed, refined carbohydrate, depresses your immune system. Enjoy your vegetables. Enjoy your greens. Mm -hmm. I want to thank Tony very much uh, for being here and also my two little helpers. <laughs> and to thank you for being here and God bless uh, Robert Bowman's soul. So if you run into his family in Red Hook or Rhineback, please mention it to them. And you know you have any question, any time, you can call our office. And I always say no question is a stupid question. Feel free to call us. We are here for the community. And yes, we are a hospital, but we don't want you to get sick. And we know food is your medicine. <laughs> What are the grams of sugar that you shouldn't exceed a day because everything does have sugar in it? Well, hopefully, when you buy anything that comes, it, it, it's not so much the sugar, right? You're talking about you shouldn't be using uh, table sugar anyway, oh, right. right? So if you're talking about carbs, carbohydrate, you really do not want to go. That's, I'm very strict. So I always say, do not go over 150 grams of complex carb per day, max, max. No more than 150 grams of carb. But that's me, okay? Uh, the less, the better. Get your carbs from vegetable, because vegetable, even leafy, green, non-starchy vegetable, they have carbs too. So try to get your carbs from there. Getting back to your answer about sugar, if you buy a box cereal, you read the ingredient, no corn syrup, no high fructose. And I always tell my patient, no more than six grams of sugar per serving. And no more than, I'm rigid, no more than 120 calorie per serving. Why do I mention calorie? Because that also affects the carbs. That's why six gram max. And what is what is the the current thing in the medical com uh, community that tells you what is what you should range between in your uh, blood, sugar in your blood sugar number? Sugar number, yeah. Well, if you're not a diabetic, you want to be your fasting blood sugar, meaning your morning blood sugar before you eat. You want it to be below hundred. If you have diabetes, you're established as a diabetic patient, I am kinder because my husband has diabetes and I know how hard it is to have that fasting number below 100. So I say if you keep it below 120, your goal should be 100. But if you really 
focus on to keep your fasting below 120, that's good. But two hours after you eat, the new thing, it was always 140. Now they're saying 120, below 120. But again, I'm kinder. I say if you keep it below 140, that's great. You know, make small goals for yourself, realistic goal, not unrealistic goal. Like people who walk into my office, I want to lose 30 pounds in two months. I say, wait a minute, that doesn't work. It works. You can lose 50 pounds in one month, but is it realistic? Can you keep it off? So you have to make realistic goal. If your number in the morning is 200, your goal should be for the next four weeks, you focus on bringing it down to 150. If your number in the morning is uh, 180, say you want to bring it to 140. Make, and one thing I didn't mention, exercise is your best friend. Your sneakers are your best friends. A comfortable shoes, walking, simple walking. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to go to a gym. You can walk. Walking is best remedy for your blood sugar. If you increase your physical activity, lowers your numbers. Exercise is key. It's a medication without side effect. For depression, for diabetes, for cholesterol, for arthritis. And again, don't say, I'm going to walk an hour every day. That's wrong. Start 10 minutes a day. It could be in a small increment. If you have knee problem, if you have back problem, start five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, and then gradually build up. Ideally, you should exercise cardio 30 minutes, seven days a week. Well, the more the better, but you know, go, if you're not doing anything, 30 minutes, seven days a week. That's very important, very important. Increase physical activity, does magic, wonders with your blood sugar. Uh, you should mention about A1C. I mean, that's really the... You, your average three months blood sugar. I'm sure those of you who are sitting in this room who have diabetes, I'm sure you know, in the past, uh, you could fool your doctor. I'm talking about 10, 15 years ago. You knew you had an appointment for a week, you'd be good, so you're, when you go for <laughs> blood work, your number is good. But now your average three months blood sugar or glyco A1C it tracks your blood sugar for three months. So that, I just saw um, a webinar that they're saying that really you want a well-controlled di diabetes, somebody who has uh, diabetes should be below 6.5. I am, on the other hand, I say it should be below six. But you know, when you, when I get a client that blood sugar is, their A1C is 13, I'm not going to tell them I want it to be six. I say next time I want it to be 11. The next time, you know, you work on it. And um, smallest step, and moderation is key. And your health, honestly, diabetes, it's in your, the control of diabetes is in your hand. The wonderful food and increased physical activity. And you also should drink water. 64 ounces of water a day, especially, you know, this time of the year, we all think it's getting cold, we shouldn't drink, I mean, we don't want to drink water. The thing is, it's dry, so when it's dry, you get dehydrated. And a lot of times, you feel you're hungry, but honestly, you're not hungry, you're dehydrated. If you drink one or two glasses of water, it helps, that takes that edge off. So water is very important. Herbal tea counts as water. Seltzer, if you like, not all day long seltzer, for a change, you can drink seltzer flavored seltzer that is salt free with lemon and lime in it or you could put frozen a strawberry in your glass, any kind of berries or a pineapple, it helps. A pineapple, it's good fruit, 
If you eat fresh, if you eat only a cup cube, it has an enzyme called bromelain, which is anti-inflammatory, helps with inflammation. If you have history of gout, that also bromelain helps with gout. What about, can you talk a little bit about sprouted grains? Regular grains, like sprouted grain bread, I see low glycemic. Ezekiel bread, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. The Ezekiel sprouted grain, it's lower glycemic. What is glycemic index, right? I'm sure a lot of you saw articles or heard about glycemic index. Glycemic index, how food affects your blood sugar, how rapidly your blood sugar goes up. Now, sprouted grain. They do not, they're higher in fiber, like Ezekiel bread. They do not affect your blood sugar the way the regular grain does. Again, you cannot eat more than like two slices of bread. So the sprouted grain, of course, is better, but it still is carb. Carb is carb, that's what I always say. Unfortunately, carb is carb. Like Ezekiel bread is great but it still has 15 grams of carb per slice, but it's higher in fiber, has I believe four or five grams of fiber per slice. The fiber helps lower, slows down the breakdown of sugar. That's where it helps the blood sugar with the sprouted <coughs> grain. The pineapple, the pineapple? Mm -hmm. I had read someplace that most of Brahman is in the core of the pineapple. Is that so? No, you still get the benefit. You still will get, because I have patients who suffered for years from gout, changing their diet and adding a serving of pineapple to their diet, but I have to be honest, I also, they also avoid things, you know, that interferes. And hydration is very important, drinking water. No, you still get the benefit. Oh. Yeah. When I look at bread, I don't read the front side at all because that's all PR. I turn it over and I look how many fiber is in it. If it's not four or more, I don't buy it. Right. I Remember, don't care what it says right. outside. Hundred percent whole wheat or 100% multi-grain. I shouldn't say that, but I always tell people, honestly, if you can afford it, buy local bread, buy bread alone bread, you know, because uh, their bread is very good, organic grain, uh, has no sugar in it, and uh, it's very good, high in fiber, best bread. And with Ezekiel bread and with the bread alone bread, you have to put it in the freezer because otherwise it dries up. So when you want to use it, just take it out. Any other question? Uh, you didn't talk about some other vegetables like rutabagas, turnips, parsnips. I mean, these are things that are out there today. Right. But if I have to be honest, if you eat the root vegetable, it's very good for you, but you have to be very careful with the portion because the root vegetable affect your blood sugar. <coughs> it's very good for you, but you do not want to eat more than a cup. It's not like eating <coughs> zucchini, peppers, tomatoes, green beans, asparagus, Brussels sprout. You can have as much as you want. The root vegetables are very good for you, but limit yourself yeah. to a cup. And cabbage and sauerkraut. Right. Compare those. How do those? <coughs> cabbage tastes sweet to me. Cabbage? Tastes sweet. The red cabbage? Red or white. Yeah, yeah, you can chew it and suck, oh, yeah. suck on it, the juice. Cabbage, I call it negative food. You know why? No. It's so high in fiber. <laughs> it's negative calorie, not negative food, negative calorie. Cabbage and celery, they're uh, negative calories. Um, you, sauerkraut, is the, if you make it yourself, right, if you don't add sugar, then you can have as much as you want. Uh, you 
got to watch it because you put salt in it too. Well, you we don't want you, you don't to use too much salt. salt. You know, that's how you make sauerkraut. You don't have salt. You could use apple cider vinegar, right? It takes the place of salt and cut away seeds, right? It takes the place of salt. You know, tastes good. Or if you use salt, um, use um, sea salt and use very little. And cabbage fills you up. And those of you whose blood sugar is not well controlled, um, I make a suggestion for lunches. You could use cabbage wrap, using in place of wrap or bread cabbage leaves or romaine lettuce leaves. And make your sandwiches with romaine lettuce and cabbage leaves and it's really good it tastes different and it's really refreshing and it's really good and you save yourself carbs and you know what don't ever ever say to yourself before you go to a party well i won't eat breakfast or i won't eat lunch because i'm going to a dinner party you cannot eat overeat your carbs because that's dangerous because that will make your blood sugar go sky high that is not wise at all when you go out if you're invited to go out my advice is you don't know what the food is going to be right always before you leave the house have a slice of cheese or some peanut butter with apple slices so when you get to the party, you're not starving. And when you're starving, remember what I said, your blood sugar drops, you're hungry, you're ravenous, and you overeat. So before you leave the house, have a small snack. Always a protein and maybe some vegetable or piece of fruit. With, always with fruit, you should eat protein. Never eat fruit by itself. Why? Because fruit is natural sugar. Yes, makes your blood sugar go up, makes you feel good. But 30 minutes later, a simple sugar, your blood sugar drops. So combine it with a handful of nuts. You can keep it in the car, right? Simple snack. And you can always carry some nuts in your car for snack or at home. Have fruit with peanut butter or cheese. Or you can have fruit with yogurt. Makes a great snack. Uh, I just, <clears throat> this is just uh, one thing that I, I find. I like to have my coffee in the morning, but if you're out, you're always faced with having half and half or, or you know, whole grain milk. I mean, not whole grain, but a whole milk. Is there any kind of something I could, you know, because I like, I, when I have my coffee, I have to have something in it, like what? And I know what half and half. How many cups of coffee do you drink in a day? Two plus, probably, sometimes three. I always say if you're one of those people who drinks only one cup of coffee a day, then by all means, if that's the only thing you enjoy in your cup of coffee, uh, it's a tablespoon of half and half, enjoy it. But if you drink more than a cup, then I would say use regular milk. <coughs> at least you get some protein in the milk. Look at it this way, right? <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you for being here. Debbie, would you like to say something? Sure. Just um, hide. I, I'll go up this way. <laughs> First, I want to thank our team for per, um, preparing all the food and um, for helping us out today. Thank you very much for that. My name is Deborah Breen. I'm the executive director of the foundation. And this lecture series, uh, the Robert F. Bowman Lecture Series, is brought to you by Robert's family. He passed away. He was a longtime board member here at the hospital for many years and a wonderful part of our MDH family. And the family made a gift, and he suffered from diabetes, and he wanted to do something um, 
for the community and his family wanted to do something to sort of memori memorialize him. And um, I think this is a great way to do it. This is actually a three-part series. We were we were hurricaned out last week. <laughs> we have another one rescheduled during the Nor'easter for Wednesday. Um, the rescheduled Sandy um, uh, uh, lecture will take place on uh, Wednesday. And then we have another one next Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Next the Monday 12th. Too, the 12th. Mm -hmm. So it's a three-part series and kind of interwoven with our, our regular fall lecture series. But we're delighted you could all come. I hope you found it informative and that you enjoyed yourself. Yes? Great. Great. Well, thank you all for coming. Thanks for cooking. That was Thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Beauty time. Unless you're going to